everyone in today's episode. Hello everyone, this is a 2019 Ford Transit Courier. It was manufactured from 2014 until today, but since 2018 it received the facelift, big windscreen and a small bonnet. A lot of plastic. The engine, we have a one liter EcoBoost three cylinder petrol engine, which develops 100 horsepower and 170 Newton meters of torque which is connected to a six-speed manual gearbox. So we are on the right side of the car. The first thing I would like to start with are the side mirrors. They are quite big. The ground clearance is more than 17 centimeters. We have a rolling over door because we have a van. This window is static. You cannot fold it up or down. The space inside is quite big. You have a lot of access. On the roof, we have two metallic bars on each side of the car. The petrol tank placed on the left side of the car. So we are at the back side of the car. Two inscriptions on the right, the Ford logo and on the left, Transit Courier. Two windows, a van trunk door, and you can open it like this. The trunk capacity is 395 liters. Not so enough, I would say, for a van, but if you fall down, you will get another 300 liters, I think, so a total of almost 700 liters. They call it a transit because it wants to be a van, but it's actually not really a van. I would say it's a Ford Fiesta based van since the original Ford Courier was discontinued in 2002. It is a hatchback derived van. Manufactured only in Turkey, it is on the European market since 2014 and from end 2018 it has a new design. The version that we had on our trip was a 1 liter EcoBoost turbo petrol engine with a manual 6 speed gearbox. Besides that, you don't get too many features not that you would really need for this type of car. The price for the basic Ambiente model which you had starts from 18,000 euros. More than 1,200 kilometers drove in our trip to Antwerp and Rotterdam. As said, the car has more the characteristics of a van, so driving position is not close to the road. It is comfortable and easy to drive, although you feel the difference of having a tall car. This is not actually so aerodynamic. The 1 liter EcoBoost engine is indeed a winner through the engines, but don't expect for something extraordinary. I would say it definitely fulfills the expectation you could have from a 1 liter engine. Nothing more besides that. The engine is flexible, the gearbox works smooth. There are many places for depositing things inside the car. Otherwise, yeah, air conditioning, manual parking brake, a small handrest, and that's it. Of course, you can also have it in superior versions like titanium, which can go up to 24,000 euros with a 1.5 TDCI engine and a big navy. 
but does it make sense? The list of competitors is interesting and I think for Transit Courier is a nice option. It is cheaper than the Citan and Caddy and better looking than the others, even if it's a little bit more expensive. Well, what would you choose? The audience for the Courier? Well, I think it is the first car I cannot really find the best place to put it. The best fit of which I think right now would be for a construction team of workers, but not the ones that are going with a lot of tools after them. As a travel car for a family? Well, I don't know. Why would you need a car which wants to be a van? You can buy a SUV or proper van, even if you need more money but would be more appropriate. Let's sum up, 3 days, more than 1200 km from Germany to Belgium and Netherlands. It was a new experience for me driving this type of car. To be honest, I don't see it as a match for a couple and would be tempted to say that most probably you will see this type of car in the construction zones. The car is stable, but on the motorway, in windy conditions, you feel that it's tall. Most of the competitors are cheaper, even if they look outdated. 